Welcome to our channel. Enjoy listening to the audiobook. Write your feedback in the comments. Andrew Ross Sorkin, Too Big to Fail, the inside story of how Wall Street and Washington fought to save the financial system and themselves. Have you ever found yourself pondering the intricate workings of the global financial system or how a single entity's downfall could send shockwaves through the world's economy? Imagine being part of a narrative in which decisions made in towering skyscrapers affect millions across the globe. This is not just a story of numbers and markets. It's a tale of human ambition, risk, and the fragile balance of the financial world. As you delve into this narrative, place yourself in the shoes of the CEOs and financial leaders who stood at the crossroads of critical decisions. How would you have navigated these tumultuous waters? You're about to explore the seismic events surrounding the collapse of Lehman Brothers, a cornerstone of Wall Street. You'll understand the broader implications of a financial giant's fall and the ensuing ripple effects on the global financial system. This isn't merely a recounting of historical events. It's a lesson in strategic decision-making, risk assessment, and understanding the interconnectedness of global finance. This knowledge will not only deepen your understanding of financial markets, but also your ability to make informed decisions in complex, pressure-filled environments. The beginning of the end. In the heart of the financial world, a storm was brewing, one that would soon shake the foundations of global finance. At the center of this tempest was Lehman Brothers, an institution whose history was as storied as Wall Street itself. This tale begins on a chilly morning in Greenwich, Connecticut, where Lehman's CEO, Richard S. Fold Jr., stepped into his black Mercedes, unaware that he was about to witness the unraveling of a financial empire that had stood for over a century. Fold, a man whose life had been intertwined with the highs and lows of Wall Street, was returning from a trip to India, cut short by alarming news. Bear Stearns, a colossus in the realm of investment banking, was teetering on the edge of ruin. This news was not merely a tremor but a seismic shift, a stark revelation that the bedrock of the financial world was far more unstable than anyone had fathomed. Bear Stearns's precarious position was largely due to its heavy exposure to mortgage-backed securities that had turned toxic when the underlying loans began to default. The bank had been overly optimistic, leveraging its investments heavily in these risky assets. When the housing market collapsed in 2007, the value of these assets plummeted, leading to massive losses. This was the alarming reality that cut Fold's trip short and sent shockwaves through the financial world, signaling that even the mightiest institutions were not immune to the tremors shaking the global economy. As Fold's car wound its way toward Manhattan, he reflected on the weekend's events. The shock sale of Bear Stearns for a mere $2 a share to J.P. Morgan Chase and the Federal Reserve's unprecedented move to open its discount window to investment banks. These were not ordinary times, and Fold knew that Lehman, as the smallest of the big four, was particularly vulnerable. The situation at Lehman was dire, primarily due to its heavy investment in subprime mortgages. The housing market collapse had left Lehman with a portfolio full of toxic assets, significantly devaluing its stock and eroding investor confidence. Additionally, Lehman had a high leverage ratio, meaning it had borrowed heavily relative to its equity, putting it at greater risk in the volatile market. With its stock plummeting, Lehman faced a liquidity crisis, as rumors spread that major banks were halting trades with them. This erosion of trust further escalated the crisis as Lehman struggled to find buyers for its assets or secure loans to bolster its finances. The specter of 1929 loomed large as Fold and his team grappled with a rapidly deteriorating situation, one in which every decision could mean the difference between survival and collapse. Lehman's plight was not just the story of a single institution but a symbol of a wider crisis that threatened the very heart of the global financial system. It was a crisis born out of years of unchecked optimism, when the pursuit of profit overshadowed the fundamentals of sound banking. 
As the crisis unfolded, it became clear that the rules of the game had changed and that Lehman Brothers, once a symbol of Wall Street's might, was now on the edge of an abyss. This story is not just about the fall of a financial giant, but also about the people behind it, their hopes, their fears, and the choices they made in the face of an unprecedented crisis. It's a tale that serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of our financial systems and the human cost of economic hubris. And as Lehman teetered on the brink, it became a symbol of an era of excess that was coming to a dramatic and tumultuous end. Geithner's Crisis Navigation As the wheels of the financial world continued to spin in the wake of the Bear Stearns crisis, a new chapter unfolded, marked by the frenetic pace and high-stakes decisions of those at the helm of America's financial institutions. This chapter of the saga centers on Timothy F. Geithner, the young, unflappable president of the New York Federal Reserve. In the spring of 2008, Geithner found himself at the epicenter of a financial upheaval. The collapse of Bear Stearns had sent shockwaves through the markets, prompting urgent action from the Federal Reserve and Treasury. As Geithner prepared to face the Senate Banking Committee, he was tasked with justifying the Federal Reserve's extraordinary measures to prevent Bear Stearns' collapse. This intervention involved facilitating a fire sale acquisition by J.P. Morgan Chase, backed by a $30 billion loan from the Federal Reserve, to avert a systemic financial crisis. Geithner's challenge was to convincingly argue that this controversial but critical step had been necessary to prevent broader economic fallout, as Bear Stearns' failure threatened to destabilize the interconnected global financial system. As Geithner prepared to face the Senate, he was acutely aware of the criticism and skepticism he would encounter. The intervention in Bear Stearns had raised eyebrows and sparked debates about moral hazard the notion that rescuing financial institutions from the consequences of their risky behavior might encourage more of the same in the future. Yet for Geithner, the stakes were clear. The health of the entire financial system and, by extension, the economy, hung in the balance. The hearings were a major test for Geithner. He faced tough questions and skepticism, but held his ground, articulating his belief that the failure to act would have had catastrophic consequences for the economy. His testimony was not just a defense of past actions, but also a plea for understanding of the gravity of the situation. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, the crisis was deepening. Financial titans like Lehman Brothers were on shaky ground. The interconnectedness of the financial institutions meant that the failure of one could trigger a domino effect, leading to widespread insolvencies and severe damage to the financial system. Geithner, along with others like Richard Fold, was in a race against time, trying to shore up confidence and stability in a system that seemed to be on the brink of collapse. The Attempt to Rescue Lehman As the financial crisis escalated, Wall Street found itself at a critical juncture, marking a transition from troubling instability to outright emergency. Following the near collapse of Bear Stearns and the Federal Reserve's intervention, the banking world was in disarray grappling with the reality of a failing financial system. The situation worsened as Lehman Brothers perched on the brink of disaster. In this climate of mounting tension, a pivotal weekend approached, one that would be crucial to determining the course of the global economy. Amid the chaos, Lloyd Blankfein, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, found himself in an unprecedented predicament. At a conference where he was to speak, a sudden call from the Federal Reserve beckoned him to an emergency meeting. The situation was dire. Lehman Brothers was near collapse, and the Federal Reserve had called an assembly of Wall Street's top brass to devise a solution. Blankfein's presence at this meeting was not just necessary, it was critical. As he navigated the complex dynamics of the gathering, his decisions and insights would carry immense weight. At the heart of these frantic hours was Hank Paulson, the U.S. Treasury Secretary. A former CEO of Goldman Sachs, Paulson was acutely aware of the gravity of the situation. He was orchestrating a meeting that would not only decide the fate of Lehman Brothers, but could also set a precedent for the future of the financial system. Paulson's strategy was clear, to push for a private market solution without government bailouts. His firm stance on this issue was a reflection of both his personal beliefs 
and the political realities of the time. The meeting at the New York Federal Reserve was more than just a gathering of financial leaders. It was a crucible in which the future of Wall Street was being forged. In the grand, fortress-like building of the New York Fed, decisions were made that would ripple across the global economy. It was here, in this epicenter of financial power, that the CEOs of the largest banks came together in an unprecedented effort to save Lehman Brothers, and by extension, the financial system. As the CEOs huddled in the historic boardroom, the air was thick with tension and the weight of responsibility. They were asked to assist in financing a deal to save Lehman, a proposition that was met with skepticism and reluctance. The idea of aiding a rival, and in the process possibly weakening their own institutions, was a bitter pill to swallow. Yet the alternative, the collapse of Lehman, posed an even greater threat to the financial system. Ultimately, even when it seemed they were on the way to reaching a solution, the collective effort fell short. Despite the bankers' attempts, external factors, notably regulatory obstacles from British authorities, derailed the rescue plan. This development sent shockwaves through the room as they confronted the harsh reality that Lehman Brothers, a stalwart of Wall Street, was doomed to bankruptcy. This weekend was a defining moment in the history of Wall Street. It was a time when the biggest names in finance came together not as competitors, but as would-be collaborators in a bid to save an institution whose failure had the potential for catastrophic consequences. The decisions made during these crucial hours would leave an indelible mark on the financial landscape, reshaping it in ways that were both profound and lasting. Lehman's Catastrophic Collapse In the immediate wake of Lehman's collapse, the repercussions were swift and severe. The once indomitable Wall Street behemoth's downfall reverberated across the globe, sending markets into a tailspin. Lehman's bankruptcy, the largest in U.S. history, marked a pivotal moment in the financial crisis, underscoring the vulnerability of even the most established financial institutions. The specifics of Lehman's demise were stark, overleveraged with risky investments, particularly in the subprime mortgage market, the firm found itself trapped as the housing bubble burst. Lehman's balance sheets were laden with devalued assets, eroding investor confidence and leading to a catastrophic liquidity crisis. The failure to secure a buyer or governmental support in the final hours was the death knell for Lehman, signaling a failure of both corporate strategy and regulatory oversight. Lehman's interconnectedness with other financial institutions meant its collapse had far-reaching implications triggering a cascade of failures and bailouts. The fall of Lehman Brothers exposed the precariousness of the financial system, revealing deep-rooted issues that extended far beyond a single institution. Key players like CEO Richard Fold Jr. faced scrutiny. Fold's leadership, lauded during Lehman's prosperous years, was now questioned. His inability to change the firm's strategy in the face of an evolving financial landscape, coupled with the resistance to acknowledging the depth of the crisis, were seen as contributing factors to Lehman's downfall. The Lehman saga also highlighted the shortcomings of regulatory frameworks. The lack of stringent oversight and the failure to identify systemic risks in the banking system came under fire. Lehman's bankruptcy became a case study in the dangers of excessive risk-taking and insufficient regulatory safeguards. As Lehman Brothers crumbled, it became clear that the crisis was not just about one firm. It was about a system that had grown complex and interconnected, where the failure of one entity could have a domino effect on the others. This episode underscored the need for more robust risk management practices and a reevaluation of the regulatory environment governing financial institutions. The Lehman Brothers collapse thus stands as a watershed moment in financial history a stark reminder of the fragility of the financial markets and the need for constant vigilance, vigorous risk assessment, and effective regulatory oversight to safeguard the global economy. To Too Big to Fail by Andrew Ross Sorkin, you've learned that the fall of Lehman Brothers was more than the collapse of a financial institution. It was a defining moment in global finance, marking the beginning of a profound economic crisis. The story unfolds with Richard S. Fold Jr. of Lehman Brothers grappling with the institution's vulnerability in a shaky financial landscape, exacerbated by the Bear Stearns crisis. As Lehman's situation worsened, 
Timothy F. Geithner and other financial leaders faced immense pressure to stabilize the system, revealing the interconnectedness and fragility of global finance. The intense negotiations and high-stakes decisions during a pivotal weekend epitomized the complexity of leadership in crisis. Lehman's eventual downfall, despite efforts to avert it, highlights the catastrophic consequences of overleveraged risks and the lack of stringent regulatory oversight. This narrative underscores the importance of rigorous risk assessment, effective regulatory frameworks, and the need for robust financial leadership to safeguard the economy against such crises. 